In this video, we will talk about uh, nonlinear regression in machine learning methods. Let's recall what uh, linear regression uh, means, uh, what we discussed in our previous videos. Uh, in linear regression case, when we have some uh, training data, we try to approximate all other data by a straight line, uh, which uh, the parameters of which are calculated um, by uh, least squares method. And all uh, the data are approximated by straight line. But it's, this is not the case for most of practical problems. And that is why we need uh, to apply a linear regression. Let's recall the general regression principle that uh, we have some features um, and uh, also the labels for these features. Not, not the labels, because the labels is for the task of classification, but rather targets, target values for the problem of regression. And then we, shall, we should apply some uh, learning algorithm, which will give us predictions based on some data, test data, we will have a, a prediction, prediction of uh, our target value for this feature or for this variable. So we need to build some dependence uh, some we need to find some function f how it is shown here it will produce some prediction based on um, the current value of our feature we consider for the simplicity here a one-dimensional case so the linear regression means that we are approximating our target uh, variable not just by a linear function by but by polynomial function which is depicted here at the bottom of this slide so um, here is a simple example. We have some uh, training points which are obviously do not belong to uh, some line. So the approximation by linear regression will be very poor. But if we uh, construct a polynomial to approximate them, then uh, this is uh, the case of uh, nonlinear nonlinear regression, nonlinear or in this case polynomial polynomial regression. So how to find the coefficients of this polynomial, uh, polynomial how to implement the nonlinear regression? It's very simple. We can just consider um, not actually x, as I, as I wrote here, but x square, x cube, x to power p as new features, and then apply a multivariate linear regression, about which we talked in uh, one of our previous videos. So we just uh, construct new features. We consider the polynomial features as a li new linear features. The, the powers of our feature we consider as new features. And then we apply the methods of linear regression. For example, here we have a test example. We have 50 points which uh, uh, do not obviously lie on uh, lie on the straight line, 50 points, and we want to use 10 of these points for uh, for training. Here, the training points are depicted by the red color. Uh, at the left side of this slide, we see the, the attempt to approximate uh, our training data by linear function, to apply linear regression. Of course, this approximation is very poor, uh, however, if we uh, try to use nonlinear regression, on the right we have we see the example of applying um, polynomial of second degree. Yes, uh, to this uh, to this approximation, it is still quite poor. But but when we select the third order of approximation, the um, as you can see on the left, it becomes. It becomes more exact for the fourth degree it becomes even more exact and so on for the fifth degree for the sixth degree here we see the um, results of approximations but but you should uh, consider that the weight coefficients weight coefficients w are gradually growing in their value yes when we started just from very small values of w about one unit. Uh, so for the case of polynomial, 
with the eighth degree, we have already the Ws of as much as several thousand. And furthermore, when we consider the approximation by the polynomial of uh, 10th degree, we have already one of the coefficients, the coefficient for the, um, I think it's a fifth degree is already 900,000. So it's too big, it's too big. And as a result, you can see some instability, instability of approximation. While our uh, training points are approximated perfectly, for other points, which will be then used for testing, independent testing, the approximation becomes very poor. So the approximation becomes unstable. This effect, uh, we will uh, talk about it later, is called uh, high variance. High variance. And then uh, for the 12th degree, we see I do not uh, bring here more or any more the values of coefficients, but you can uh, you can assume that you can you can believe <laughs> that they are quite large, quite big, quite large large values. So and approximations when we uh, using a degree of poly approximating polynomial more and more uh, the quality, the error of approximation becomes higher. So the some kind of reverse effect. So uh, here on the left and on the right, we, we see the example of nonlinear regression for the 16th and 20th degree. And uh, the quality becomes really, really poor. We have some abrupt uh, changes in these functions, although training data is approximated perfectly for test data, which was not used for training, we see very big, very, very big errors. So if we plot the test error, I'm sorry for this overlapping, when we plot this test error, uh, depending on training error, we see that, uh, that with the growth of polynomial degree, the training, uh, uh, training error uh, quickly goes to zero quickly vanishes, but but testing error, while, for the, while uh, at the very beginning it is also becoming lower, then it becomes growing, it starts growing. So this is the so-called effect of high variance. And um, there are two, poss two main uh, problems for machine learning algorithms. The first is high bias. High bias means this uh, usual situation even when uh, training data I approximated very poorly, uh, but high variance, high variance. This the high bias is is depicted here on the left, and high variance is the situation when the training data I approximated perfectly, but but the test data, independent test data, are approximated very poorly. So high variance and high bias, two uh, different problems. They they can occur, of course, uh, simultaneously also. For example, as in the case of the uh, graph on the left, which is shown here. So how we deal with it? How we deal with uh, how we tackle the problem of high bias? Of course, we can uh, try to get more data. Usually, usually training data, uh, no, excuse me, not training data, but add additional features. If we use, for example, the uh, linear regression, we can use try using polynomial regression. If we use, uh, otherwise, if we use just one feature, we can use more features and thus the uh, to tackle the problem of a uh, high bias. Uh, um, but usually if uh, we have the problem of high bias, getting more training data usually doesn't help. But when we consider the problem of high variance, high variance, uh, you, getting more training examples usually helps. Also, we can try to use the small sets of features or reduce the order of our polynomial. And also we can try regularization, so-called regularization. What does it mean? We will consider uh, further. So let's recall the quick growth of uh, our values of uh, weighting coefficients uh, W. For example, they were uh, so big for the uh, tens degree approximation. So the proposed solution, which is uh, commonly used in such case, is to, re um, to apply a regularization. What does it mean? We penalize the high values of W. We penalize, we prohibit the algorithm uh, 
a regression algorithm to find the values of W which are large in value. How we do this? We introduce in our cost function the additional additional uh, parameter, additional term, regularization term, which depends on um, the sum of squares of parameters W. You can see it at, uh, at the bottom here. At the top, we have cost function without regularization, which we are, which we are accustomed to see in uh, linear regression problems. Uh, but here, and uh, in multivariate regression problems as well, uh, but uh, with regularization, we have additional term. The coefficient lambda regularization parameter uh, regulates the allowed values, the allowed scale for the values W. The larger becomes this lambda, the lower the lower we get the our weighting coefficients. And uh, on the contrary, the lower becomes lambda, the higher are possible values for W. So this this regularization term with depending on regularization parameter lambda makes uh, our problem more stable. It is introduced for the stability to provide uh, the stable solution of uh, regression of regression problem. And uh, we can apply the gradient descent, the equation as we discussed it in the previous videos. The gradient descent uh, basically is the same equations, the same equations for linear gradient descent, but we can see I plotted here, I marked here by red color, the additional terms, which we have first in the loss function, and then in um, the update equations for the weighting parameters W. And you can notice that the parameter B, parameter uh, for constant shift, we do not update it because it doesn't suffer from high growth uh, when uh, when we apply the methods of uh, methods of uh, nonlinear regression. So um, you can also see that uh, in the standard uh, software packages for machine learning, for example, in a scikit uh, package, we can uh, initialize the learning algorithm, learning regression model with parameter alpha. Alpha uh, here means lambda. <laughs> which we uh, here alpha denotes lambda regularization parameter, which we used in, in, the, in, in the previous slides. So it's a common feature, it's common technique. It's common technique to penalize to the growth of weighting coefficients. So it is uh, the main idea of regularization, regularization technique. Uh, so let's uh, see what we get. Um, for example, for the 10th degree polynomial, here is the, on the left, the situation is when we do not perform regularization. And on the right, when we perform regularization with the regularization parameter um, 0 0.05, 1 20th. So we reduce the error in, uh, we, we get twofold uh, redu reduction of our error. We can see it. Uh, and uh, of course, the approximation of training points is not so good, but nevertheless, we have much more accurate approximation of training of training points. So this is the effect of regularization. And let's uh, recall what we uh, what was our test error versus uh, training error when we did not perform regularization. And this is how it looks, both the errors look when we perform regularization. So the test, the training error becomes higher, of course, but the main, the main, we can, uh, when we have, when we cannot train the model just on the training data, it's not honest, because we must have some data for independent training, and we will discuss it a uh, few minutes later. And um, so, but the main result, or the main effect of this regularization is that the test error really becomes lower becomes lower and it uh, also gradually gradually decreases with the growth of polynomial degree for nonlinear regression. So this is the effect of regularization. This uh, is very important to understand that we cannot uh, evaluate our model, our uh, methods for regression as well as other machine learning methods just on the training data. 
we need to have uh, uh, have some data for independent testing, which are which uh, are called cross validation data. Here we in this diagram we show that we have all amount of data, both training data and independent test data. But training data must be divided uh, onto training data which we use to train the model and cross validation data which we use to validate the model, which data which did not take part in the training. So the effectiveness of our method, the preliminary effectiveness of our learning algorithm must be evaluated on in uh, on cross validation data which we are not used for training. There are many techniques of how to select this cross validation data. We won't consider them in this short review. And of course, the most important point is when we use the when we test the algorithm on test data which we didn't see before. But if the algorithm is proper, properly trained on cross-validation data, we can expect that it will also produce some good results on the independent test data, which were not seen by us before. So let's recall once more how we tackle with the high bias. When we have a high, high bias in our machine learning problem, we can use some additional features. We can try adding polynomial features. We can, if we are already uh, making regularization, we are trying to solve this problem with the regularization methods, then we can decrease the regularization parameter lambda. But when we have a high variance problem, when we have high variance problems, high variance problem, we can uh, try to um, select, to collect more training examples. We can use the small uh, sets, uh, small sets of features. Yes, uh, it means, for example, we can use, uh, we can decrease the uh, degree of polynomial for approximation, and also we can increase the regularization parameter lambda, as we did in the example uh, just before. So these are some uh, techniques which uh, can be used when we are dealing with uh, nonlinear regression. Thank you very much for your kind attention. In the next videos, we will continue to consider different methods of uh, machine learning, uh, regression, and uh, classification. Thank you.